The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. Well, things look a little weird right now because I'm, and probably sound weird, because I'm down in my basement at uh, the entrance to my home theater. I'm kind of a home theater nerd, and we have this little alcove here that was really specifically built to house a backlit poster. This was something that the previous owner had built, and it's actually switch controlled. So when the previous one that was there just kind of went bad, it was uh, old fluorescent tubes inside there, I decided to build a replacement with LEDs and something that I could fit standard size posters in. And that's what we have here. So it's a very quick build. Uh, I'm gonna build it the way that I think it should be built, but don't forget there's always multiple techniques for how you can get these things done. Um, you can do this fairly inexpensively and using pocket screws to make a simple frame like this. Uh, but it's all about the, the LED backlights and how you get all that stuff to work. So let's head up to the shop and start building it. Let's start with the four frame parts. I'll be using Cherry for this project. All the parts are milled to size based on the cut list, which you can download for free on our website. The measurements are based on a standard 27 by 40 movie poster size. You can obviously resize the parts as needed if you want to accommodate something smaller like 24 by 36. The frame pieces are connected with reinforced rabbits. So I'll cut them on the ends of the long side pieces using a dado stack and a miter gauge. With the regular blade back in, I'll cut the groove for the plexiglass. I know exactly where I want that groove to start, so I set my fence to that distance and make the cut on all the frame pieces including a test piece of plywood. Now the groove needs to be wider than the blade's 8th inch kerf, so I bump the fence over little by little and use a test piece to confirm the fit on the plexiglass. The poster will live in between two layers of plexiglass, so with the creepy baby head in there, I'm looking for a fit that's a little bit loose since the plexiglass needs to be able to slide. With that setting dialed in, I can make the second cut on all of my frame pieces. I'll use the same process to make the back panel groove. My back panel is set in from the back of the frame far enough to allow me to plug in the LED light strip that I'm using. You can move the back panel to suit your needs. Just like plexiglass, you want the back panel to be able to slide into the groove easily. On one side of the frame, the side piece will be removable, so I'm going to install some threaded inserts in the top and bottom pieces. The hole is drilled slightly undersized for the insert, and when drilling you really want to be as straight and true as possible. Probably should have used my drill press for this, but uh... Blah, 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 blah. To make sure the insert doesn't move, I'll line the hole with some epoxy and then slowly drive the insert into place. Make sure it sits just below the surface. Using the same drill locations, I'll mark the top and bottom of the removable side piece and drill holes that are just larger than the bolts that I plan to use. Now we can test it out. If those inserts aren't perfectly straight, this is when you're going to find out. Now mine aren't perfect, but I keep the camera far enough away and I pick just the right angle so that you'll never know. The other side of the frame gets a permanent connection. I'll glue and clamp the joint closed. Rigid clamping squares are super helpful for a glue up like this. Once the glue is set up, I'll reinforce the joints using screws. You could also use dowels here. If you're in a rush, you can forego the clamps and just use the screws from the get-go. Just make sure that the pieces stay nice and square. To cap off the screws, I'll cut some walnut dowel stock into little nubs. After the glue dries, I can use a flush trim saw to cut them off. The back panel and the plexiglass are the same size, so I'll cut the plywood first. Both sheets of plexiglass are cut at the same time using a plastic cutting blade on my track saw. By the way, plexiglass is ridiculously expensive! WTF! Remember, we want a somewhat loose fit here, so make sure that both the plywood and the plexiglass sandwich slide into the grooves easily. 
Now because the lights are so close to the poster, there's a good chance we're going to have some hot spots of light. To minimize that, I'm sanding the back piece of plexiglass on both faces with 80 grit. This should help to scatter the light and act as a diffuser. It actually makes a pretty big difference. <laughs> on the inside of the frame, I'm going to put a pretty heavy chamfer on the inside edge of both grooves. This should help the plywood and the plexiglass panels to find their home when doing that final installation. Probably should have done this before the glue up, but YOLO! I'll give the frame a nice sanding and add a decorative chamfer to the visible edges. I have noticed that I'm kind of on a chamfer kick, down with roundovers, am I right? Now let's cut the stock for the French cleat. We'll need two pieces cut with a 45 degree bevel. To glue one of the pieces to the top back of the frame, we'll clamp them flat with two calls. We can then apply glue and clamps to secure it to the top of the frame. Once the glue dries, the bottom part will be removed and later attached to the wall for the final installation. Now we can apply some finish. Hard wax oil is my weapon of choice. While the finish dries, I'll work on the back panel. I need one hole near the top of the LED for the wire to pass through. To help increase the intensity of light, I'll apply aluminum tape to the entire back panel and use a wooden roller to smooth it all out. The tape not only reflects light, but it gives the adhesive back light strip something nice and smooth to grip onto. The light strip doesn't need to look pretty, but the more even you could lay it out, the more even the light will be. These light strips are pretty cool. Every few inches, there's a little copper spot where you can actually slice it and cut it to length. Thankfully, I didn't have much waste, just a couple of inches to spare. Now let's assemble. Here's where that chamfer in the groove really helps. Without it, the plexiglass sandwich might just hit the surface and refuse to pop down into the groove. But the chamfer prevents that from happening. Time for a test run. Yeah, baby! By the way, I bought this double-sided poster years ago, and I'm just now getting around to this project, so my poster choice is a little bit dated. With a cleat on the wall, we can plug in the lights and hang the frame. The moment of truth. Ah, I was gonna say, dude, that took too long! <laughs> All right, so everything is working, thankfully. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention is a, a safety uh, tip here. If you are going to keep something like this on all the time, LEDs actually can build up heat. So you want to be careful with that. You may want to include some sort of ventilation in there, um, maybe holes or grooves on the top and the bottom, something to allow the air to get through. Keep in mind though, that also lets light through, which might ruin the effect. So you know, use that carefully. But here, I'm not really keeping this on very long. You know how I use this? I, I bring someone down in the basement and I go, hey, check this out, and then I turn it off. <laughs> so it's not something that I'm gonna keep on for more than just a few minutes at a time, so I'm not too worried about heat buildup. All right, so thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully, you have a, a reason to build a backlit poster like this. I think it's really cool. Uh, but thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.